Ayla Najolo from Proqualis, and I have today with me Frank Federico as an, an executive director from IHI, specialist in patient safety. Thank you for talking to us, Frank. Thank you. Um, can you please tell us, talk a little bit about the importance of hospital setting up a system of safety? Safety doesn't happen by accident. That is, we have to have the right structures in place, we have to have the right processes in place, and we have to have the right measurements in place. So safety starts with leadership. Whether you're a board member, or whether you're a chief executive, whether you're a clinical leader, middle manager, or even the leaders who exist at the point of care. People don't have titles, but they are leaders because they're respected. They all have to make it a priority. They all have to make it, this is how we work here. The second part is understanding how people work and developing reliable processes to do that. What we find many times is that people don't have processes that are intended to provide evidence-based care for every patient unless contraindicated. So by reliability we mean that if we know a patient should receive some care, they're going to get it each and every time the way it's supposed to. We have to have a learning system. And the learning system is bad things do happen, mistakes do happen, some of them don't result in harm, but they're a good indicator that there's something wrong with the system. And unless we have a good system of learning why it's happening, teaching others about what we did to solve it, we're never going to fix the problem because it's always going to be done in isolation. We need to have a culture of learning and immediately everybody starts, oh, how do you change culture? Our approach is the way to change culture is to do the right things. Mm -hmm. Because once you start doing the right things, people will start accepting that as a culture of what they want to do. There's an aspect called psychological safety that's also important. And respect of the workforce is an area of safety that we haven't really touched on yet, not enough. But by that I mean not only do we want to respect our patients, but we want to make sure our staff feels respected. And psychological safety is the ability for people to feel respected, speak up when they see something wrong, and be able to say, that's not working, we need to fix that. Or if they see somebody doing something wrong, to say, that's wrong, Camila, that's not the way you do it. Uh, the classic example is hand hygiene. You're going in to see a patient, you didn't use good hand hygiene, I should be able to say, stop, until you use good hand hygiene, you can't do that. The measurement system is really important because like anything else, if you're not measuring how you're performing, how would you know? The challenge that comes up, I see, is oftentimes people are in the quality assurance mode. That is, they're always collecting data just to make sure they're hitting, they're hitting the targets, as opposed to measurement for improvement is small samples, understanding. Now, there's nothing wrong with the assurance part. I think that's part of what we need to do. But when people don't do the measurement for improvement, then they never know how they're performing. And that's being done in small samples. Is it working the way it's supposed to? Let's make the changes to get to that endpoint that we want. So there's a thing called the Duran Trilogy, which is quality planning, quality control, which is a quality assurance, and quality improvement. And organizations should be moving along that triangle, depending on where they are and what they're doing. And without these components, unless you have them in place and you have transparency where you're willing and able to show your data, to share it with others, to share it amongst each other, transparency in talking to patients, transparency in talking to each other, it's going to be difficult not to improve safety. I mean, if you have them, safety is going to get better, but it takes time. This is a major challenge. It took us a long time to get to where we are. It'll take us a long time to fix all the systems. And last but not least, we're not alone, as we're here in Brazil and it's showing how dedicated the people are to improving safety. Um, IHI model is all teach, all learn. We should all be learning from each other. What we've done in the United States, other parts of the world, and we can learn from you as to what, what you've done to improve safety. Thank you. Can you please just talk about, just talk a little bit about the importance of leadership and establishing the system of safety? So, no matter what industry you're in, mm -hmm. if you don't have leaders who are committed, who have a vision, who have a strategy, who know where we want to go, it's not going to work. So in safety in particular, the leaders have to do more than just say, we have a safe hospital or I'm going to charge all my staff to make sure they have the safe hospital. You know, Deming says quality and safety are not delegatable. It is the responsibility of leadership. How did you do that? Of course, leaders will feel, well, we have so much to do. Of course, they have budgets and they have the productivity and they have so many things to monitor. But unless they say safety is really important, 
unless they allow the culture of teamwork and transparency and psychological safety to develop. And that doesn't mean just say, go do it. It just means, what's my role in making sure it happens? How do I model the behavior that I want people to have? How do I encourage my improvement teams to understand what's wrong and then go fix it? Those are the kind of things that leadership has to do to make it work. Now, it's still up to the improvement teams to do the improvement, but imagine what it's like when the leader comes to your area where you're doing the improvement and you stand in front of your board where you have all your data and the leader asks, so tell me how you're performing. Tell me what you're testing. That adds a layer of importance to the work that's being done. And that's critical. And it's all leaders. It's not just the chief executive, but even the chief financial officer has a role in that. Okay, so last question. What's your advice for those who are starting in this journey, for the thousands of hospitals in the country who are just beginning? So as you start your patient safety journey, I think one of the first steps is understand where you are today. Mm -hmm. That's one of the steps. Um, it's good to look at how much harm is happening in your organization, whether or not you have reliable processes in your organization. There are a number of tools to do that. However, I don't want to make this a year-long, two-year-long data collection. Mm -hmm. I think for the most part, hospitals already know where they are. So there's a mortality review tool that IHI has developed. There's a tool to identify harm. There are methods to look at reliability. And what's really important is understand your variation. So you may be performing very well in one area, but the rest of the hospital's not, or vice versa. You need to know where that variation exists. The second part is the answer to how is why. So get your staff to understand why you're making the changes, why it's important to have a safe process in place. That will then help them realize, okay, now that I know why we want to do this, we can figure out the how to do it. And of course, never fret alone, never worry alone, because somebody out there is trying to solve the same problem, and we are a global community and we can learn from each other, and I encourage very much that if you're trying to solve a problem in surgery, there's somebody else either in your own country or your own part of the world or in the world as a whole who's probably got the same problem they're trying to solve. Do it together. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Hope you got that. <laughs>